we've got three different clocks here. Uh, these are our master clocks. This is the one that we stick in the 002. It's our current production clock. Um, and it actually is comprised of two clocks. One handles the 44 kilohertz sampling rate and its multiples, so 44 and 88. And then the other one handles the uh, 48 and 96K sample rates. Um, within Pro Audio, my experience has, has been that uh, a lot of people in this industry, a lot of engineers in this industry, seem to, pre seem to prefer what we call uh, fundamental crystals. In fact, you can find stuff from some fairly well-known designers online talking about how much better fundamental order crystals are than, uh, than other crystal oscillators. And we don't use fundamental order crystals. We actually use a third order crystal, which means that the third harmonic of the fundamental is what uh, is the signal that's actually put out by the clock. Uh, and the reason that we do that is because it has wider bandwidth. And because of the wider bandwidth, it has inherently less jitter. So. Um, it gives a, a wider, more analog-like sound to uh, the audio reproduction. <clears throat> and what we do with this is because we're running uh, a higher order crystal and it's a higher frequency, we have to divide it down. And that's what this portion of the circuit does. It divides the signal in two, uh, and then it goes out into the digital board of the 002 or 003. All right, so these are, these are crystal oscillators. Mm -hmm. um, they're manufactured for us specifically for audio frequencies. You have to get them custom made. Uh, and we order them from a company here in the US uh, who makes, typically makes crystals for aerospace applications like NASA. They're based in Florida. Um, and we found that, that by far these are the best sounding uh, crystals. They have the lowest uh, intrinsic jitter, which is just jitter that's inherently there in the crystal. Um, and it's about one picosecond. Um, and then once it comes out of here, we divide it in this little integrated circuit here. Um, this section here is the power supply, and we use something called a shunt regulated supply. It um, has less noise than um, traditional power supplies that are used, often used in pro audio. This is the word clock. Uh, same basic concept. Um, third order crystal oscillators, about one picosecond of jitter. Uh, and then they run into a division network that divides it down to word clock rate, which is 44K or 88K or 192 or whatever you happen to need. Um, there's a couple things at play. First of all, when, whenever we have to divide something down, there's so much switching that's going on, so much transistor switching, that we have to figure out a way to uh, limit the noise uh, because it'll show up as a harmonic within the clock signal. Uh, so we use a couple of tricks that um, I don't often discuss with people. So, uh, <clears throat> and I'm not going to discuss them here. Uh, one of the things that we like is, uh, um, well, for this particular application, uh, we used a discrete transistor-based uh, inverter instead of one that's built on a semiconductor chip. And then we drive everything into a transformer-coupled output. Now, a lot of people think that... Um, uh, a clock is just a clock is just a clock. The key to clocks sound, especially a word clock, is the transformer and how much current you're driving into that transformer. Because what happens is the harmonics within the clock become a little exaggerated, shall we say, and it imparts a nice mid-range characteristic. So that's kind of the goal. And you'll find that in pretty much any mass-produced word clock.